You're all getting ready. All you crickets. Nothing we can do about this one, though. NASA's finally admitting, folks, there's a sun. NASA finally, N-A-S-A, finally admits it's going to get colder. Just like I told you, be careful. We sit quiet. Remember, Title 50 says we have a notice opportunity to go respond to. I've been telling you to go check that out so we don't act like we are helpless victims. There's a sun out there that has been doing some stuff, and it is contributing to our weather. Like, no one else understood that. And so it finally comes out after years and years, and I suggested to you the mitigation factors that they were talking about for a couple centigrade, a couple centigrade degree increase over a hundred years in the time of a downturn of the solar energy input to this earth would actually cause a faster cooling appears to be on the horizon so all you crickets keep it up keep pretty soon your little feet won't be you can't put enough heat on this one folks because when it starts to do this this is, we're not talking a couple degrees over cent, over a century we're we're talking tens and 20 degrees and more over seasons now this is btw rlm 326 for those of you that want to get some of the links I'll be using, hopefully we'll get tearing, tearing through some of this today. I don't know. It seems to go at different bits and starts with speed. As I tend to just come at this with tabs, what they claim to tell us in the news, which I tell you is just notice to us, and we get to prepare even through all the propaganda. What I ask you to do, do because of a lot of this stuff is really preparing to hurt us, we have to really respond against it. A lot of people don't like to hear that. A lot of people want to make excuses, and I don't know what else to say about that. Oh, my last uh, 20 years now in addressing all this hasn't been something of uh, non, non-action. You can't just complain about it. And you can't come out and see the wrong things and do the wrong things either. This is the other thing. And some of you who have uh, actively engaged in what I've said, you've found that out yourself. And so there's not many proofs, but there's enough proofs. And I just keep, I don't know what else to do. I keep coming. I actually, I'm not smart enough to know what else to do. So I just keep coming back every week and trying to tell you folks, we have something here. That, no, now NASA finally agreeing that there's a sun. This is Galileo 2.0. Where'd that come from? Well, that came from the government, the United States government, and all the other governments agreeing to, I think it's Maurice Strom, actually des- designed the definition for what climate change was. It did not include anything other than, a, any, you could not look in past the man-made cause. And then back in uh, here just a decade ago, we found out Michael Mann ca- made, uh, Michael, Michael Mann made global warming. He made it. He made it popular. He made it something with his hockey stick in uh, and that excited all of Canada, I understand. But at any rate, um, uh, th- there is a sun, folks. Yes, Grimner, there is a sun. Uh, this was completely taken out of the equation, the sun, this natural thing that, without which we wouldn't even exist, folks. So this is the whole nonsense. This is the insanity behind all of this. But, uh, okay, so we can uh, you can listen to the officials, or you can listen behind the woodshed, go do your own research, get a nice uh, understanding about all this, understand that there's agendas against us, and as I've told you, underneath that agenda, there's methods of implementation, and that's what we attack. That's what I come here to talk to you about and try to get you to jump anywhere, just anywhere. It's just interesting, the subject matter is so broad that this this crime against us is there everywhere. And I don't even know what to say. Everyone will say, well, it can't be everywhere. Well, yeah, and, the, and when they're harming you, yeah, it's everywhere. I'm not a paranoid. I, I keep uh, <laughs> pointing out where all this stuff is. It shouldn't even be a question by now. Uh, uh, not not that I need people listening to me, but I know that if we had more people listening to me, we would be on the road quicker. Uh, there's just nobody wants to hear this stuff. And I say, okay, don't get all, don't don't get your panties in a wad, folks. When I say nobody, I understand there's some of you out there. I'm talking about the mass of people. I'm still not seeing the mass of people, and I'm seeing when we do work with masses of people, there's a long education process. It shouldn't have to be. But there is. There, there absolutely is. And I know that because, again, every, we, every day, we're doing something every day to explain to people and educate them and re-educate them and re-point out. Just had a situation come up this week. Uh, one of my colleagues is 
re-educating, re-re- actually reminding, because one of the commissioners is still in office, in this case, luckily, reminding one of the commissioners who remembered a presentation he was given by my colleague back in 2014, the same vile problems are coming back to haunt that county. Now, we're going to get the opportunity now to set a better and more concise record as well. With no resistance this time, because we've got one commissioner understanding we were there. Not we, my colleague was. Now, that's me working with him over years, folks. If you, again, freedom is vigilance. I don't know about what y'all did for Independence Day, uh, but you should have been non-dependent, and you should have been becoming and realizing that there was a lot of stuff out there that uh, we needed to stop, and we are uh, we're really independent. We're 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 we're, there, we're in the international order now, independent, not non-dependent. Most people don't understand about how this dynamic works. They want to make up stories. They want to because they don't understand it, and because nothing seems to work, they want to invent rea- uh, alternate realities instead of just saying, "Okay, we got a problem here. Let's handle it." But NASA, NASA, finally admits there's a sun and things are going to get colder. And I told you, if we don't get this right, the so-called science, it's all politics, folks. This is how you know it. If they get it wrong, they start doing things. And and so-called professors and scientists and academia get the hands on it to keep themselves in a job. They will be sucking money from the government and ends up being... Well, locally, it's you, uh, the property owners, but federally, it's just a big made-up thing. And I won't go there. They, uh, but they start sucking energy that could go elsewhere on things that are big jo- big experiments and frauds. And they keep themselves in work. And they make up these fantasy worlds. They make up the fantasy things. I'm not sold on a lot of things anymore that I used to when I was in science. And I was pretty good, pretty good in science. In fact, I'm going to get a little bit to that here, what's coming down more made up. but So there's a sun, folks, and it's out there, and, and NASA is saying it's in a downturn. However, this thing works, is going to cool off, and I'm telling you these so-called chem, these persistent contrails that they've been um, say, denying that they, can, they create. I told you, if they get this wrong and they start shielding the earth when it's in a cold cycle, it's going to get deeper cold, faster. Does that mean you're going to have a glacier out your door? Well, if you could open your door tomorrow, no. It's not how this works. But you see extremes happening. You see uh, no polarization, if you will, a nice stable polarization in the world. It's being aided by a homogenous magnetic field. That engages the the energy coming in, the uh, electrical energy coming into the system, uh, totally uh, different, less organized. And so we get that wrong and we mess up. And we could we could actually cause ourselves trouble. And this is where we get the idea of the cherry red button and, and the nuclear power. They still press the cherry red button to see how the big the boom was, even though they thought at the time the chain reaction might not stop. It would envelop all matter. They had that thought. So there's, there's people on the switches of, of, of experiment that will do things uh, and just and close their eyes and hope they can open them in a few seconds later, and it's still okay. Uh, to me, that's not, not good enough. And it certainly gets us on the, off the path of where science, our understanding of this reality is still always a question in science. It's never a set thing anyway, that we get to move better through it. Maybe even more efficiently, and maybe to the betterment of people, once we throw out the profiteer, the pirateers, and all this other nonsense that we're in face, which started this whole uh, global fraud around this thing called anthropomorphic global warming. Again, nature was eliminated in the first definition. That was then handed to a second subcommittee to look through. It was the only lens they were given in this uh, climate change nonsense at the UN and all these uh, activities. They were looked. They were handed this definition, which could not look at anything but man causation. And what you have from then until now is all this stuff like this carbon trading nonsense that we've been uh, addressing. I'm asking you to step up and stop that against you. It brings on all this uh, Internet of Things and the technocracy. It brings all this stuff on while they're trying to control underneath this global fraud for control. It brings on more control to keep control. And yet the people in control deny that they're the ones in the causation or that they can disappear to to benefit the world. They don't want to disappear because they want to make sure that you don't harm the world. And that's all a fraud anyway. I mean, the whole thing is just one 
you know, the green religion. That's just another belief system that's just a setup. So we can continue buying into this. But if we needed official sanction, for those of you that still need official sanction, can't you really use your brain anyway in the beginning? But uh, it looks like NASA finally admits it's going to get colder. In recent years, researchers have considered the possibility the sun plays a role in global warming. After all, the sun is a main source of heat for our planet. Pause. Yes, they actually said that. Now, global warming, that's not correct. Uh, the sun, uh, you have to understand how they work these words. The uh, researchers have considered the possibility that the sun plays a role in global warming. They don't know what global warming is. Role global warming is defined as a man-made cause, a human, actually, the animal causation that apparently is foreign to its own environment. It's a fascinating insanity that they deal with. But researchers now are disconnected from what global warming actually is defined as, and then they say the sun plays a part. No kidding. Do I need a scientist, an expert, say, to tell me that? Well, no, not behind the woodshed. You've been hearing it ever since I've been broadcasting, trying to expose to you these disputes that they throw in your face, that they get you to argue over, that they already have the process and method worked out to get you finally to agree one way or the other. But it turns out to become a big force to be reckoned with in the world that taxes your life because you, you human animal, are the problem blamed by other human animals, little psychopaths. And so a lot of this, too, it seems to me, uh, writing with this is a whole lot of things that come writing with it. It's if so-called science can invent something, then they get to go research it, and then they can get money because they get someone to buy into it. It's all everybody, a bunch of scam artists, it seems, anymore. These ideas keep coming out. <clears throat> they keep getting people to uh, buy into them, and so they get lots of minds working on it. They get lots of money to pour, pouring in. The Duke uh, University fraud case, that should tell us a lot, uh, doesn't seem to do much. People are wrapped up in their own lives, but they actually should be, but, but but in this case we can't be because of the harm that does right now. There's an attack going on our families and has been, and maybe not even have a family now, but that should have been a big clue too, but it's not. People just don't really want to focus on any of this stuff too much. Uh, but uh, the, the researchers don't understand global warming. Uh, they're now incorporating the sun. They actually make the statement that it heats our planet. No, duh. Are you kidding? You got, you got to tell a scientist that all this money goes in to say have someone write that on a piece of paper? Yeah, exactly is what the problem. It does. And so another story comes up. Scientists are using some atomic particles to search for a mirror universe. So actually don't even understand the universe they've got, and they're going to look for one that's a mirror. It, is, it becomes the height of insanity. Why are we putting any of this energy out? Now, it fascinates me no, to no end. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I really am intrigued. When you look at what they do with this stuff, and then it goes nowhere, like dark matter, quantum imagination, when there's other more basic explanations that could work, the sun isn't a ball of gas, folks. But no, no one wants to look at that problem with all their rules and all their equations and all their funny squiggly math characters to explain it. It doesn't work. You can't use a gas model for the sun. It just doesn't happen. There's one guy, a professor, Dr. Robitaille. Dr. Robitaille. Uh, he's, he's, one, he's a guy on it, folks. I mean, he's just he's got his own theory. And it sounds a whole lot more plausible. It's more in line with what I would have thought, although I don't do the study. I used to do that a lot longer ago, but I was really into looking at all this stuff, notwithstanding we didn't have the technology we had today. Like when I was, when I was young, they said, there's no water in the universe. It's all right here. And I go, but, but you have electrons and you have protons and you have matter out there that's interacting. There's got to be something going on more than what you're telling me. I had a pretty inquisitive brain, I guess. Some things didn't make sense. I can't tell you I'm a, I was absolutely able to see clearly. Uh, no, I had lots of questions, but they didn't have good answers from the from the people. And so that made me kind of keep moving along. Never satisfied. Never satisfied with these answers. And I start lurking, no, this is all like just politics. It's a bunch of people scamming their way through uh, getting, if I can buy, get you buy into my, my neat idea, uh, I can get lots of money and I, get, I can take decades to study stuff. Uh, fusion has been another one of those sciences. It's, look how many years, folks. Look how many years, and they still have nothing. And if you look into that, it's almost as if they're doing it wrong. You can see that they're they're forcing something that can't be forced. It has to work. You have to set up the parameters just right, and it'll just happen. 
And we aren't even on that trail. Scientists are using subatomic particles to search for a mirror universe. This is like climate change. For us. Now, I have a little, what struck me here was a, um, an experience I've had in my life. Back, back in high school, bits of it that I can remember now. Uh, subatomic particles searching for the mirror. They, they, when you read the, sto the story about what they're going to do, they're going to slam a subatomic part particle into an impenetrable, uh, an impenetrable wall. How they're going to do that, I don't know. Uh, when you understand neutrons pass through the Earth from a cosmic area uh, sources, you wonder, well, what they can't be using a neutron for an impenetrable wall. And then you realize, that for me, it, the whole story started to fall, fall apart. And then it talked about a 50-foot tunnel a pa uh, past a ring-shaped magnet uh, into an impenetrable wall. Will this particle be blown into, and then the result will be a, a potentially a mirror universe? It, it, to my mind, it was complete nonsense with my experience, folks. I went to the Stanford Linear Accelerator, I think three times, but I'll take credit for two, because I went two years in a row to represent with another guy, uh, high school uh, science. And there was a big state test at the time, and we took the test, and uh, yeah, we didn't do so good. It was actually a higher than graduate level college test in science. We'd never been exposed to the material, um, my friend and I. Uh, found out, though, uh, we had an honorable mention, even though I didn't feel we did real good, and my friend didn't feel uh, that we did real good. We did answer some questions right. It doesn't sound like much, and it's a little bit of a side, the, the, the Stanford, being at Stanford, it's a little of a side the subatomic particle thing, but I'll get to that in a second. And so we didn't do real good, I didn't think. We answered a few of the questions correctly, and uh, we got an honorable mention, even so. Uh, found out later, the reason why we got the honorable mention, because between the my friend and I, and from representing our school, we didn't we answer the same questions right. Together, we actually answered quite a number of questions different than everybody else who did win, who had more questions answered correctly. Between the two of us, we answered more questions different than uh, correctly than uh, the difference of the other of the parties. It was noticed by somebody, and we were further told later after we came back. And this was the second year because we didn't. We were just and went and took the test first year and did okay, but nothing, nothing fantastic. It was just a thing you did. It was at the time you went and represented your school for whatever quality thing you did at school. And I happened to be doing science pretty well enough to standard uh, meet that standard for the for representing our school. Uh, and so we uh, second year we did really well uh, comparatively enough that people noticed, even though we didn't win. And the honorable mention was that we had answered more questions right on this very difficult, I mean, it blew me away how difficult the test was when I was told later. That's how oblivious. We just went and did things. You're not told about it. Found out later from my uh, chemistry teacher who uh, submitted us to go to the to the uh, Stanford Linear Acceler Accelerator to take the test for this, uh, this contest. That the reason why they took notice was that we answered these questions that no one else had answered. But each one of us, but representing the school, didn't answer the same one correctly, the same questions correctly. We had different questions. And we didn't know at the time, and my, uh, Mr. Hammond was his name. It just came to my mind, Mr. Hammond. He intentionally was given, he, he intentionally did not tell us of all the study materials that he was given to do the contest. He felt, this is the kind of teacher I, I kind of ran across. He felt so confident, even though he knew we wouldn't win. He goes, he was not about, I wanted to, he was testing us. He, he was so confident that we would do well, comparatively to the, to the thing. He put us into, into, the, into the flow without even preparing us for any of the information. We walked into, this, walked into the um, test cold, literally cold, just that we were going to take a test. When, in fact, they were given study materials. And all the teams that won were given all that. They had teams of teams. It was like something they did all the time. This is the first couple of years that they felt from our school they could send somebody in. That the teacher didn't wasn't. He says I'm not. I didn't want. I wanted to see how good you do because I think you do really well. You you guys are doing excellent work. What I was doing, I was interested in doing experimentation with bioluminescence because I was also wanting to do an, uh, uh, oceanography. This stuff wasn't even available at the time I'm going to school. It wasn't a thing then. Well, the sciences were there, but they weren't together as a thing. And I like bioluminescence. This is before light sticks, folks, before those bl glow sticks that you break. Yeah, I was doing that study and looking at that kind of chemistry. didn't even exist yet. 
Uh, anyway, it didn't go anywhere because then uh, American cyanamide came up with the right process, and now you have glow sticks. <laughs> I, I didn't do that. But that's the path I was doing. Went to this test, unprepared completely, and between the two of us, didn't answer the same questions the same, and was identified that that was the case unprepared. And then I asked my instructor, I said, well, that's great. Okay, so we, I guess we did pretty good. And he looked at me with a big smile and said, you, you guys did excellent. And then I said, so how did the other teams not how did the other teams not get all the all the answers correct? And that's he started laughing. He had a barrel. Uh, he had a big laugh. He says that's the big joke here. How did they not make a hundred percent when they had all those study materials? Anyway, so we did really well. We didn't win, but we did really well. Uh, we uh, between the two of us, we answered more comprehensive uh, information without being trained, which got the uh, attention of the teacher of the of the people holding the test. After that, we went on a Stanford Linear Accelerator study, what we call visit. You go study this thing, and they walk around. Long way to walk. All the electromagnets, all the study particle accelerator stuff, all at the time they had, we were told at the time what they were doing for this, about quite a few decades ago. They told us of a little story that had happened. And uh, this one day they wanted to, uh, they started to learn how to deflect these things and capture them in rings, and so they had built on this ring on the end of the Stanford Litter Accelerator, we were being told. And one experiment that they did, they were going to try and capture, capture a, par a subatomic particle, run it in the ring, and they were going to do, do whatever tests that they were. This Again, this is early on to all this. Uh, they ran a test at one time, and this particle goes flying down a mile and a half, two miles, whatever that thing, and two and a half miles, I think, as straight as, a, straight as an arrow uh, laser shot, has to be. Uh, goes to the end, and they go to divert it, and the particle doesn't divert uh, correctly enough, and it goes like a 45, instead of going into the ring, it goes out the end at a 45-degree angle. And by the, by the time they're finished, they're talking about all this, and so we get to the end of the thing, and they go to the back to the window, the end of the our particle accelerator where this big diversion ring is. They, you get out to the outside, and they point to a mountain uh, about a 30-degree angle or so outside the, the line of the particle accelerator where this subatomic particle went into a mountain. And they see you see the saddle in that mountain where the ridge comes down? It was a finger uh, ridge that came down the mountain. So that saddle that's in there, uh, yeah, you could see it. It was just a, a hog out of the of, of the top of the ridge of the mountain, and it's not it's not way up in the sky. As you can point out, just a few degrees, ten or twelve degrees up uh, from your shoulder. It was right there. In fact, you had to come around this place when you drove into the place around the corner of the road. And they said, well, that subatomic particle went in like a gut, like a bullet, and when it subatomic particle hit the matter inside that mountain, it blew out the back side of the mountain. Little bitty hole going in, a big giant hole coming out. One little subatomic particle blew the back of the mountain out. So when I read this story that says they're going to take into, make a ring-shaped magnet subatomic particle into a bent impenetrable wall, trying to find a mirror universe, I hope they're wearing their safety glasses. Folks. Long story on this, just to say something. All that experience, you come and you've been told stuff in the world, and then someone comes in the future to do the exact same story, uh, same experiment that's already been done that moved a mountain, literally moved the material of a mountain. And you walk on the backside, you can see how it was all blown down the mountain. Physical evidence of a sub subatomic particle doing what it does, going at the speed of light or close to it. How someone like this comes up and says this, and nobody in science says, wait a minute, don't you think CERN's already smashing that together, two, two impenetrable products, and they're not finding nothing? Do you think you're, you're not seeing any universe? Do you think maybe that's already been done before? It's kind of the ongoing saga of our, of our so-called modern life, the modernization of our life. If you have a story fantastical enough, and you can scare enough people or get some support from enough people, you too can pay for your uh, beans and rice for a long time and get other people to pay for it. So, we can keep going on this thing. We can keep utilizing, utilizing frauds and lies and, uh, hey, I have no problem with experimenting, but when we, I've seen in my life, without even be, getting going to the science I wanted to get into, uh, when we've seen the experiments before and I keep regurgitating them every 30 or 40 years, I start to wonder about us. Now, most of you all could care less about that, probably don't know. It's fascinating on the story. Uh, so we have an internal problem 
with the system. There's, as I said last week, and Frumpy picked this up, there's no internal accountability. This is a serious defect, and yet we overlook all of that. And and so, uh, you know, more power to them in a way. If this is truly science, it's truly going to get somewhere. But there's so many things that were, you go in, go in, and you just look at it, and it's just, okay, it's a neat idea, but it, it's gonna, not going to go any further. And yet you see the kind of traction. Climate change is a really big one. Look at all the consensus science. It's not even science, but look at all the scientists that signed on to that. When you find out it's just a small percentage of a certain body, a group of people that were filtered through that said that, 97% of those group, itty bitty percentage actually. In other words, the outcome-based alternatives only gave to those that would already say yes, that, that, that position, and asked for them to agree to the outcome. That's how this method works. And then you see how big this has gotten to the point that they're actually coming after you as a causative factor in a harm that never exists in the world. And everybody buys into it. Or does, doesn't agree, but doesn't do anything to counter it. Now I get to us where we have focused in on that. It became one of the focuses, focusing agents of change, they tell us, and transformation, they say. And they, they, it, they are, but they're not, they're, they don't come by any law, any objective basis. The thing that every, lots of people will, will condemn, the law. Yeah, that's, just, just re, to rephrase it. It's the objective basis for everyone to live by. They can't come that way, and that's how we take them out. Point out the fact, no, that experiment's been done. It was done as an accident at Stanford Linear Accelerator way back when. And uh, this is something that maybe doesn't show us a mirror of our of the our universe. Maybe it's just destructive force, and you just kind of like watching something go boom. Anyway, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know at some level. And I'm starting to find, I think I'm, again, I told you before, I think I'm starting to see what cynical is. I'm starting to distance myself with lots of things I see. Just, I just don't have the energy for it all. It's just people want to agree to the most fantastical things, which I used to get into. And it is kind of cool. It is cool. I mean, trying to find that next thing we don't understand. I'm into that part. But when we can see evidence that of uh, things that don't make sense, and that's not challenged, and then we create a whole structure around how we take some people that, We'll believe it. We'll believe the fantastical and push it hard and push it hard and push it hard until it becomes a thing. And then we use that to go the, the ramifications of that or what we claim as a as a bludgeon to beat people down and make more money from that. So we get more ways to buy our, uh, buy our beans and beer. Uh, we, we've got we've lost it as a internally each one of us. We've lost it. folks. And so may, I may be off the mark on this. Uh, you know, she calls it oscillation that may lead to the mirror matter experiment. I, I don't know, folks. Let's understand the one we have first. It's, it's, it's going to be kind of a theme. Let's understand what we have here first before we start thinking uh, that we know better. We can't even tell. There is, I don't think there is dark matter. They made that up. Quantum right now, I think, is, a, is an increased resolution in material sciences. That's it. That's all it is. It's nothing more than that. And then they make up this big, they want to kill a cat or, or, or not kill a cat uh, as a theory, again, all theories, about why we can't see certain things. Well, if you're blind to something, how are you going to see it? If your senses are limited, how are you going to see it? Or intelligent to make a sensor to see that thing you can't see, how are you going to see it? How are you going to know it's there? It becomes the wind in your a breeze, just a blast of wind in your face for a moment. You know what was that? And in that is all of this. We get to make it all up without any basic foundation. And then we see now we have a we have a problem now. Lately, in the last 40, 50 years, there's been a shift to political science. You see what they did there? Science and political science. The political lobbying underneath pushing agendas to control populations. You know, I see these stories and they kind of, they anger me a little bit. Just a little bit. Not, that it won't matter to me. This thing will go on. It's going to go forward. Someone will press money. It doesn't But Look at CERN. Look at all what they did in CERN. They're now having to fudge how that thing is actually working. And that invented, invented a whole other, you know, a counterculture to what CERN does. Oh, the black holes that it's making and all this other stuff. 
and I look around. Nature's not that not that not that vulnerable. It's kind of interesting how tough nature is. No, it's destructive. It but that's on our our level. Uh, that's it destroys what we under, we believe is destructive. And anyway, I guess philosophically we can go on and on about that part. But uh, anyway, they're going to put some money into looking for a parallel universe, folks. It's all about this quantum thing nonsense that goes on. We don't even understand the reality that we're in, and we're going to go invent other ones. We can't even understand the place, the the the, the space that's, that that this Earth sits in where it sits in a universe of things and then can't decide, can't answer what's outside of it, but we're going to go look for parallel ones just like it. It's a fascination. Why not just spend the money into the reality that we're in? Uh, I look over quick, I see Frumpy asking about the dual split experiment is still a cornerstone of quantum. Yeah, but it's a, it depends on how, again, how do you frame that? I've I've looked it over, thought that over, and thought it over, and thought it over, and it just there's there's a way to conceive that frame frame that that it it would well I can't answer it because it's the, the the question, but it doesn't answer it by having the split is, and saying that that creates quantum that that gives us a place when I can look at material science and look at I, what IBM's doing in their super cool technology and say well wait a minute if I have a transistor bias junction and that junction has a material spread across its face, which is very, very small, and I can divide, I can actually see the variation in voltage between the, the input side and the output side. I have actually a, what they call a qubit. I can look at 10 different spots. It's all the same current, but I'm looking at different spots and I'm averaging stuff out. And they say it's essentially averaging. It's only 50-50, roughly. And then we get the, the the split experiment, and we get the Schroeder's cat. Are we looking? Are we not? And then then Einstein becomes relevant about the law of relativity. It's relative whether you're looking at it or not. And you visual, and in looking into it, it has causes the problem. Nobody understands any of that. They say they understand it, but all that starts to create stuff like I'm going to do a subatomic particle. I'm going to slam it into an impenetrable wall. And to my knowledge, that what that did last time was blow the backside of a mountain ridge out. Uh, that's it. Let's move on. Let's go figure out something else. And anyway, someone's going to make a lot of money on this. Uh, at least feed feed their. Uh, they'll make a living for a long time. Uh, they'll contribute. It's like all anybody who wanted money in the last 20 years, they had to put climate change in their in their grant. And if they weren't looking for climate change, they likely didn't uh, get anything. They, they, they don't, we don't understand the basics of how this place is set up, but we'll accept a bunch of consensus that starts with the hypothesis of some guy who made up a definition, and the and the definition of that is calculated on a broke of a non-proven hypothesis and a statistical relationship at that. It, it is the height of I mean, some level of conceit and arrogance and hubris relative to what science is supposed to be, a, which is a, a con con continuous. What? Not an answer, an investigation. Which is partly what I tell you, become the investigative reporter. When someone comes with an authority, become the investigative reporter immediately. When you do the legal side, the lawful side, whatever you want to call it, when you're dealing with authorita, and before, before you can prove it's authority, uh, you better do the same thing. You better start qualifying and feet on the ground, fluid motion type stuff, become the re reporter and not be caught up in the fact now that you see that they're coming after they come after investigative reporters now it's called journalists i'm not asking you to write a lot about it first i'm talking about at the point of investigation you have to be the investigative reporter that's how this method gets interrupted and you call out this essentially you call out the people that are making stuff up immediately so the climate change that's being called now from NSA, ANASA, to be getting colder, which I told you if we have this wrong, then we're clo clouding the atmosphere to reflect light and or cause, uh, remember, they use the aluminum um, oxides to change uh, as a um, semiconductor, which alters the physical characteristics of the atmosphere in lots of different ways, whether it's light frequency shifts, temperature, thermal, uh, conductive, uh, and all these other parameters. The moisture condensation, all this other stuff, all these aluminum oxide products can do all this. We read that years and years and years ago. I read that to you. And it's made up, and we do that, 
And we start to tamper with the environment, and then we, underneath it, we're coming with this carbon. Well, carbon's a problem. Remember, it used to be just be carbon dioxide. Now, carbon is the issue. You get these lunatics in office that start to push this uh, crime, uh, fraud, against you, and they do it in ways also which are not in law, which means they're a treason on their face. They're coming contrary to all law, not just the laws of the United States or the laws of the state. They're coming to all law against all law and reason literally insanity has come into your houses well we already knew the marble nut house where is one of the state houses called we already know that's there but i mean i'm talking about a true built-in insanity that they use these frauds continuously these soldiers who use them are relentless and last week i told you uh, the carbon uh, legislation that was st- killed in in oregon hb 2020 I told you last week that that's not going anywhere. The infrastructure, the capacity to bring it back is there. It's going to come back. It's going to come back with a vengeance. It wasn't even, I don't think, 24 hours. A friend of mine sent an article relative, again, to climate change, how big and bad this thing has been used against us. And now NASA is saying, hey, it's getting colder, which means that theory is no good. Absolutely zero. If anybody wasn't even looking at it, if you just take the National Atmospheric Space Administration word now, you, you have to say it's getting colder. How? If it's global warming. We have a problem. We have a problem, and yet the legislators are going to press a, with that excuse, that fraud against us. The Oregon governor ready to take lead on divisive climate plan. Can't be somebody who is right in their mind. And in fact, we have a complaint now before the Oregon State Police relative to incompetency claim in the Constitution of Oregon for this very point. Now we're aided by NASA, aren't we? So what I told you before, if you get in the game, things come to your aid in time. This is the kind of thing I'm telling you. We'll now just adapt that on over as the authority for what we just did if we get anybody hesitating. And there's more authority than, if, again, if you point out a crime, remember the, the federal imposition here uh, relative to uh, penal statutes, crime, crime and relative to officials, is that Title 18 U.S.C. 4 and 3. That if you see a crime, you're obligated to talk to tell someone who can do something about the crime, and they're obligated to do it unless they want to become an accessory to it. Those two statutes is what does that on a federal level. And I told, I've, I've told you that the CIA claims all the states are just federal administrators. And so there's the the avenue there directly, uh, and then they'll they'll tell you that the federal authority is concurrent over the state. That's not true, but that's what they say, and that's how they prosecute you. And, and nobody, uh, as I, well, nobody that's been in trouble has even argued these points of, of lack of jurisdiction. Some of you who have listened to me and done the research realize what I'm saying is is the law. I know it's not my the truth; it's the law. It's how this works. That there is no authority for any of this, but it continues. So we just live in this big illusion that this governor, notwithstanding the fact, I told you how important is this that she can pull it back, but that she's coming back because this this uh, sustainable world they want. The world, the future we want, not you and I, but them, these people like this, these insane people in offices of decision. And supposedly she's relying on her power and executive is still there, folks. It wasn't 12 hours after I told you this thing was knocked down, but it's coming back. She was coming back and she says it's a, uh, she's going to try and pull this thing together. Uh, Governor Kate Brown said Monday, see, I said Sunday, and she came back Monday, that she's ready to use her executive power to lower carbon emissions following a nine-day Republican walkout that derailed landmark climate legislation uh, and embroiled the state in a political crisis pitting liberal cities against rural residents. That's the point, folks. This is the whole urban this is the one Oregon plan. You have, probably have one Kansas plan. You probably have a one Washington plan. You probably have a one California plan. Yes, Grammy Murray, I started there because that's what came into my mind in the middle of the country. And uh, one this and one that state plan relative to climate legislation. And we just found out NASA is saying there's a sun. Completely invalidates this whole thing if you hadn't had a clue otherwise. But the one uh, state, one name the state policy consideration is they place the citadel metros of the city against, in an opposition to the countryside, countryside, where all the production is. That's right where I keep telling you. That's the land law, disposal law, supposed to protect production. In actuality, like you say, you're independent with 
a society and its functions and other things that are on you and not non-dependent, the metro areas are these citadels that have been academically exalted and only in the academia because they're not in law. And they're claiming that they are the source of all government, the source of the authority from which the rural folk, now that's a derogatory term, rural, that's why I use the word countryside, and it's the country that you're talking about and the people of the country, not the rural. They set it up rural, urban. Rural is the metro. It's the citadel. It's the it's the castle with the moat and everything else that it, it tried to indenture the rest of the country to support it and claims it's able to do that on its own when in fact it produces zero nothing. It's a it's it is the no it is the consumer. It sits in commerce and the tertiary governing bodies. It doesn't set in the primary and secondary economy relative to production support of production. And yet this governor thinks that climate legislation is needed. Something NASA, NASA just said in their climate that the sun exists, destroying that whole argument. She's willing to come out and literally, if you know how to read what you read this in the story, she's going to be making war on the people of, of the countryside to force this issue against them. But you have to understand this alternative dispute resolution. The reason that she has to go there is because she has to get the industries there to buy in to the climate legislation. In other words, alternative dispute resolution, her executive power is to become the premier saleswoman to get you all to buy in. And she's telling you that she's going to, she's declaring war on this issue. It doesn't look like it in the words, but I can tell you in practice it will be. The pro, this program will have to be more aggressive. The governor said, quote, because the time pressures are still there and I'm committed to keeping those goals for our children and our children's future. She just declared war, more aggressive. It's not peace now, understand. She's going to become more aggressive on this. And they're going to use the children as a human shield in this war against the countryside and the country folk. Now, I'm taking a little bit of time to continue this discussion until you really see how simple it is to see who you're up against and that they're there and that they won't go away. And it takes a big, magnificent effort to counter the invasion. You won't really appreciate what needs to be done, and you'll probably not ever get in to do it, and you'll just kind of, when you hear this stuff, it'll go in ear, one ear and out the other and not realize she means business here. And I predicted that she would mean business, and it didn't take 12 hours for her to get on the record and make sure that everybody knew there was going to be a there's a new day a coming, and we're going to be aggressing, an aggressive to get that new day. And she's doing it on a topic that the NS, NASA just came out and said, "Well, we're going to have to admire the sun, isn't it warm? No, oh, not as warm as before, but isn't it warm?" So, everything I keep telling you is almost it's confirmed, exonerated, whatever the word is. It's there to see the crime against us all. Now, 2013, how this all works was we sued uh, the, the Jefferson Mining District, was in a lawsuit, and named two named parties because we had to bring two named parties in that were people so that we could get it to the land and each one of those named parties was, so I could explain to some of you that may be looking in, one was a load claim holder and one was a placer holder, placer claim holder, in the land, disposed land, and secured as if held by a patent. And so you see, so there was a method to the madness here. If you don't understand, you just don't, like, information you get, if you don't know why things happen and you read, you may not get the whole context, like patents are written or someone's explanation of a, new thing they've discovered is written. You may not understand the underlying uh, objectives that are needed to be met. So we had the Jefferson Mining District as the totality of the p p property holders, and then two named, uh, in this case, m two men that had claims on the land, on the land itself, in the land, that were exclusive to them in two different le ma levels of the m uh, mining law. And so we covered the totality of the mining claim and the production underneath that that was granted that was interfered with by things like this 
and we sued for the methods against the methods that that bring forth things that are utilized to advance sustainable development. Climate change is one thing we named. And you hear today, after we've given notices, that she is insistent on being aggressive. This is a not peaceful, I'll just tell you that. She's insisting on making war on the people of Oregon, and mostly the country folk of Oregon. Uh, so if you, again, I don't know what people think about what I say. They probably maybe turn away. I don't know. This is uh, evidence of a ta- an attack, an invasion, and an attack on most of y'all's lives. Whether you live in the city or not. See, if you're in the city, you're, you're dependent. You're independent. See, they talk about interdependency. And this is why. You're dependent on those that make the stuff to survive. And individually, outside, we're all interdependent in a way amongst each other. Like, if I make minerals for y'all, I may not make, although I can, I have the right to, I can grow my own food. Maybe it's not enough. I have to go to the farm, my farmer friend. And if I want to be a slide of beef, maybe I go to my rancher friend. If I want to go watch the uh, turtle soccer game, I have to go down to the to the desert and, and watch the cattle uh, play turkey uh, turtle soccer, I suppose, since there's so many damaged turtles out there. But if that's what I, I want to do, i got to go rely on my rancher friend to do that. So we have an interdependence there, but individually we have raw materials production going on that those things that we each make we don't need. But the citadel of the metro areas, the cities, the walled-off places that want to now claim they have authorities more and distinct from the counties, which is all improper, but see, nothing is in law. So you, you, this is why it looks like it's lawless around, and you don't understand. What, and you, so you believe it doesn't. The system's not working. Yeah, the system stopped working, and no one was doing the checks and balances. There is no internal accountability in you. There's no internal accountability in the things that are representing the society that you're living in. And there's nothing, no internal accountability to those systems and instrumentalities that are supposed to be functioning. That the Citadel, the academia, the political sector, the tertiary economy that, that's sucking from everybody, and then within that is the regulation authority, sits on top of its ivory tower and looks out over the whole of the territory and says, you work for us. It's not law. They're completely dependent on everybody in the countryside. That the people like this governor, the agent of change and promotion of sustainable development, through this one aspect of climate change, is one of the evading force. She's like a general. She's not really the the head of it either. She's just an implementer. So maybe, I again, maybe you all hear it. Maybe you know about it. Maybe this the main is, means something. Maybe it doesn't. I'm telling you this is an invasion. It's not stopping. I told you that last week. Here's the proof. I told you when everybody goes away, she would still be there. Now, here she is. Then we're standing there, and we just sent the, letting the notices out to combat this point. And so we have some more work to do, some follow-up that'll work, to make the evidence to you all how the wrong these people are. And you cannot turn away because she's attacking, she's attacking actually the way of life of the establishment that everyone complains is bad. That's why it's bad. And that's, that's on us. And uh, all I can tell you is that we've been pressing and pressing and pressing. We made the foundation for this. We also make inroads into the implementation. And I guess I'll make this statement. I didn't have the link up. For those of you interested in the public lands and this and that and uh, federal management, I think uh, it was the Forest Service that's going to redo the rules or look at doing the rules. I think it's CFR 220 about their 228 rules as well. They're, they're having a public comment period now. So those of you in the public lands, you might want to look at the process of NEPA and what they're trying, they're going to do. And I don't know if it's relevant to what the Trump administration wants or the combination of what we've been pressing and doing. They're going to raise the categorical exclusions to not include lots of smaller, they'll call them impacts, but uses, so that they're not looking at us. And so those of you that are wanting to push back the agency's oversight in forcing to ignorant people the, the NEPA, which shouldn't be put on them if they're not in a project plan or demonstration. No miner that's in un, an uncommon mineral deposit, valuable mineral deposit, should ever speak to them v- relative to a plan of operations or a notice of intent. 
but, but out of ignorance and in promotion of internal uh, forces, they do. Nobody in Jefferson Mining District will, but they do. The the public, the mining public at large, who will not listen, accepts that they have to do things. Well, this this new comment period now for the how they're going to implement the N National Environmental Policy Act is seriously important to look at and maybe start figuring out, look very carefully what they want, speak to exactly what they're asking to do, and and maybe agree with the categorical exclusions. But go ahead and put your alternatives if you want it. Why only 7,400 acres uh, for per for to be thrown into a categorical exclusion? If categorical exclusion means no NEPA, why don't we expand it to maybe 10,000 acres for harvest? They're actually using the harvest word, folks. This is important. See, because of this climate change in us, they stopped harvesting. So we're having an effect inside pushing all this back. You might call it the pendulum swing. Now, I don't agree with that because that's still violative of law if it doesn't meet the law. But the agency in position has caused this pushback. This didn't happen because nobody's out there doing something. There's people out here doing stuff. And so I keep, I guess, imploring you all, to find something that you want to fix and go keep pressing you may not even know how when you start, but you'll you'll get it. You'll educate yourself quickly, and then you can hear, listen to me, possibly every once in a while to understand where the how the condition flows and goes. But here she is, Oregon Kate, Governor Kate Brown, uh, said on uh, Monday that she's going to use her executive powers to lower carbon emissions. How's she going to do that, folks? She's only over a corporation called the state. She has no no power over private property. All she has, when you read in here, she has the ability to run her minions out to thump, beat on you uh, verbally and cause meetings and try to make records and uh, accost you that way. That's all she has to do. And she's completely involved inside with the implementation of something that she's supposed to be enjoined under. And the fact that she's not now, we're now able, now that Spain may raid all public, we get to move our enforce equity enforcement to start calling attention to that and press on the agencies internal to that state that haven't been a check and a balance that are duty bound to do to call them out. And I think because they won't act, we're just going to call them out and show everybody how these states are not working like their states. They're working like organized criminal syndicates. Everyone might think, oh, yeah, that's right, or, oh, who cares, or whatever, you're wrong. The point is that's what they're operating like criminal syndicates. Are you going to continue to allow them to come after your life? They said, some of you may not care, but they said if this thing gets through, the minimum tax will be 22 cents a gallon more on your gas. I also find out they always do that, right? They seem to do that kind of stuff in before, and it didn't happen, so they can't do it. But at this time, but right before the gas prices start to go up as well, due to external factors, in this case, maybe the war, the, the, the war drums being beat, solvent, your, your refineries being blown up every Sunday, uh, summer but, uh, to limit the supply to keep the prices up. And the price on top of that, because they claim that carbon is a problem. And I told you before that carbon maintains a mediation factor. NASA, NASA, found that it, it, carbon, is a me, uh, carbon dioxide is a media, mediation factor. The Earth is actually probably producing it to, to maintain itself uh, in an environment, which, which kind of gives it to a, a point of consciousness, doesn't it? Like, what is that? But anyway, here, what I told you last week happened not even 12 hours later. Uh, these people who are pushing this green religion are warmongers, Though their words may not look it, I'm telling you, utilizing the children as human shields to come aggressive does not embrace peace. And the reason why they're coming aggressive is because they don't have a law to do it otherwise. And the aggression isn't even, it's, it's really a subtle aggression. The aggression is the incessant pounding that they'll do to get you to say, okay. And you'll say okay to a lot of stuff just to get them to shut up. And that's our one of our failures. We've got to stop doing that. So you don't think that governments will use children in war? And most of you that are listening to this broadcast understand that's, you know, that was rhetorical. That's a joke. Of course, governments use children for war. The children, in this case, is the war. The governor used that in her last statement, didn't she? It's for the children. Those are the human shields. What she's willing to do, she's a criminal. She's willing to put harm on them in the future. And she's not telling you that. So, 
outcomes to confirm about, well, could a politician be so nasty as to use children as a, as a human shield in their terrorist actions? Well, the UK admits sending child soldiers to Iraq. United Nation, United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense has revealed through a Freedom of Information request that the British military sent five soldiers who were under the age of 18 into war zones over the past two decades. Doesn't sound like much. The point is, they just did it, didn't they? They had no check and balance. They send, uh, send young, young minds, and then that's just the description of government anyway. They send, you know, we think 18's adult, but that's a legalism. I think anybody who was of the, of the age, you didn't, re, you started realizing maybe you didn't know so much, even though you thought you knew everything, even by up until 30, you didn't think you started to mature until about 25 anyway. So we, we, we know that there's a, naturally there's this flux time in there that we may or may not be who we are, but you know, the government wants to throw you out there as soon as possible. Well, they make a limit like they care, but here the UK doesn't care about that. Here's the freedom of information. Someone asking the question, the right question, and pushing through until they got the answer to get the evidence. It's not opinion now. Governments are willing to let kids through. We all hear the stories about how kids lied on their to get in the war because that's the only thing going. They, they were in the war. I've, I've heard as early as 15 or 16. Not a problem on the government. Okay, so someone lied to get into the war. But the government's not too bashful not to, to look the other way and let young, I would say children, underdeveloped people to go become fodder. Again, the government doesn't care. It's only whatever fulfills the ends justify the means. To, to someone like Governor or Governor Brown shirt, she would justif she justifies the future harm to the children using them as a human shield that she's protecting. It really exposes the height of the insanity and the psychopathy in these people. And I don't care, she could be a Republican, or she could be a Democrat, she could be a liberal, she can be a Green Party, which isn't green, it's just, a, well, I guess it is green by name, but maybe not the same thing. It's interesting what the adjusting, the sliding, uh, the sliding arbitrary and capricious rules are that everyone tries to become a party to, what, to get someone to buy into their platform, don't they? They all end up being politics. They all end up going to the same end. They all work into the same structure, and they all end up promoting the same stuff. Again, as I've pointed out over and over, this place called United States of America was set up as a two-party system, which would control the place if you allowed it, and you did. And so it was the political parties. That, what do they decide for the control? Is how much, of which direction they're going to destroy you in order to get that control. And what did the last case of the Supreme Court I talked about here? Relative to the gerrymandering, uh, the Supreme Court washed its hands of the federal courts doing what? Anything political. There's no, the states will decide. The, two, the parties will decide. And if you look close, you'll see that uh, problems with uh, what is it? The parties wanting to, you look around, parties trying to get recognition that they're even a party. That you have to ask, should so a problem. Getting back to the point. You have the party system is ruling now in the political sense. In a way, I, I don't know. I, I guess if that's the way it's wired, I guess that's the way it's wired. But it has ramifications in your life that if you're not paying attention, eventually it comes around to bite you. Again, it does, if you you look at the way the, that you, your way of life called America, this thing that everybody wanted to be you know, celebrate, was actually a candle. You're the candle, and uh, you got two wicks, and you got these political parties that are wired into the establishment to burn you, and you haven't understood that trap and that prison, uh, then we have a problem to start with. You're never going to get beyond uh, understanding even close to what I'm talking about, because I'm so many different layers beyond that, on how they've used all that to continue to con keep the control, but just removed and just removed more than you, who you can that you can see why we sued both the political parties and the bar association. They're all the problem. Now what do you do, folks? That's the battlefield. What are you going to do? You can complain, or you can figure out, take, sit back and look at the thing and look at it with a with a critical, real critical mind, and start realizing we're in a different place than what we've been told, and we've been told that so that we would not understand the place we really were. No, we'd rather listen to people. Uh, We'd rather listen to people who say, oh, we got mirror universes and I'm going to slam a subatomic particle into a, in an impenetrable wall. That to a neutron part, a neutron doesn't exist. I mean, come on. 
So, I guess we'll make a, a minor universe, a minor mirror. And how are we not going to break that mirror? Like I said, you better be wearing your safety glasses if the Stanford Linear Accelerator story to me when we were there and I saw it myself, if that was um, anything legitimate, if they weren't telling me a lie, then uh, the safety glasses are going to be a requirement on this experiment and a waste of time. But moving over, and I told you uh, also relative to so now we know that the children can be used as war, uh, human shields. We use their, their fodder in war, like all young men were have been in the past. Now they're adding women. If you think feminism is a help, folks, I mean this is just an ongoing destruction. And remember, at some point the borders break down, so they don't care that they're killing you off. They're just trying to get. They're, they're trying to. They actually work on your patriotic spirit to kill it, so that you don't have that. And eventually, it homogenizes the world through the borders. They deborderize everything, which people think that that's important. And I tell you, or they want to see that, like what's a border? Well, it's important. All you know is look at the natural border in the cell wall to tell you that you need to have some kind of a boundary between you and the next one. It's just a fractal of uh, nature. Otherwise, we wouldn't have all the distinctions that we see in the nature that we have. They'd all be one big mass amoeba. That would be our universe. Oh, but wait a minute. It couldn't have a cell wall, so it wouldn't would have either. Wow, that's interesting how that wouldn't work real fast, doesn't it? Huh? So let's move on here. I also said I brought up Gregory Williams' article about the, uh, relative to this, this governor, and I told you that we ha are going down a different track relative to constitutionally valid claims, which are chargeable in crimes, not impeachment. Uh, I told you that we were going that, and I offered Gregory Williams came to me la late last week as a broadcast broke in order to uh, challenge whether or not these politicians are felons or not. He has his 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 rundown. He pr produced the uh, the text of the Constitution, uh, and I said he rather, although he does good work, and, and I, I've met him. I've talked with him a few times. In fact, I think I was a, a part of an interview on one of his broadcasts in a different place. Uh, but at any rate. Uh, we always check the work and see if it's valid, and I said you would want to double check. Well, someone, another terrestrial broadcaster, a day or two later, through an independent channel, I found out, I had to be given the link, uh, found out, for those of you that are interested in this and how to check this down, and I think some of you need to, because I, uh, because it's it's important, check down whether or not Gregory Williams' issue um, research was correct and valid. I told you be careful to look for court cases. Well, apparently there was one. Well, one that the terrestrial broadcaster made mention of and uh, claimed in that that, in fact, the decision, the thing that Gregory Williams was saying was invalid due to a federal court case, which agreed that it was unconstitutional, a measure six and a measure nine. And I'm going to just do the button, the, the, the summary of this. You really have to dig in. I did some more research uh, to see this. Well, Yes, it was, but you got to kind of put everything in, really got to step back and really look at this over time as well. In 1994, a decision went through the, uh, the district, federal district court. And for those of you that understand the federal district court problem, I'm not even talking to the lack of, lack of jurisdiction there. I'm just going to speak generally to this condition. Just go ahead and give them the jurisdiction for the moment. Because there's a dynamic that works off into the future. 1994, and then the Veneta case, Veneta versus Kiesling was was mentioned as the case. I tracked it down, again, trying to validate all this. And I, since I told you, to those of you that are interested, to run this down, and I said, but you have to do some study, I decided after reading, this is such an interesting complication that you needed to be at least advised on how to look at a little bit of this and what you're looking at when you go there, if you're interested, on how you look at these cases. And I told the, one, uh, the friend of mine, who my colleague, who was telling me about this, I said, well, be careful. These court cases sometimes aren't argued correctly or they're not on the right point or there's some technical technical issue that wouldn't apply to a current challenge. So I wouldn't just throw that out because there's a court case that dismissed Measure 6 and 9, which Gregory Williams was relying on through the Constitution, not the measure. Well, it isn't measure, but I mean through the constitutional provision, uh, that I would be careful just to throw everything out. But the Veneta versus Kiesling in 1995 decision uh, was... Uh, a federal court case that found those those cases to be invalid, those uh, provisions, those measures invalid. Well, that wasn't the only thing. Uh, so there was another case two years later in 1997. It was a state court case. This Oregon Supreme Court decides. Very interesting read. The when I the when I the way I read, the Oregon Supreme Court agreed in 1997 
on the challenge of someone in the case as to whether the federal court decision was even valid jurisdictionally, not based on their establishment, but in the fact of the federal court determining Oregon political law. Now, I want those of you who listen, remember the gerrymandering case. That's going to come up. So there actually is a challenge in there relative to the federal district court as a subject matter challenge that the Oregon Supreme Court says, well, we're not... We're not going to design. We don't. It doesn't matter whether that case is now in appeal. This is two years after after the uh, 95 case is still in appeal. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to decide this in a slightly different way. They said. Then said the courts. The Oregon Supreme Court then said it's it, it's clearly the district courts have the authority to determine these matters in elections. In paraphrase. Now, I want you to think about that. Write in one or write in a decision in 97 that is now not on measure six, but on measure nine in 97. The court, the Supreme Court gives to the federal courts doesn't the authority to determine political matters in the states. Was an interesting insight. And now I wonder, given that the Rucho case happened about gerrymandering and that the Supreme Court just came out and said, no, the district courts have no political say. We don't police the politics of a state, the political elections laws of a state, the political election system of a state. It, it would say that the district court case in 94 is invalid. It would say that the 97 case with the Oregon Supreme Court that agrees that the district courts have authority is invalid. They don't know how to reason law. And they had the duty to do it. Shows a big glaring hole in all this stuff. Which I'm not, which you have, if you're going to take this on and you do this kind of research, and it could be in any other type of thing, you have to look very carefully on the lineage of cases as it goes through, and you can see how bad the judiciary performs and how that can offer you options of going in and re pointing out things. That when the 97 case decided even against Measure 9, it didn't decide against Measure 6, which was Gregory Williams' point. Not that he knew that or not that he mentioned that, but I'm saying for you looking in hindsight, Measure 6 doesn't look like it's off the table due to the Rucho case in just June of 19, in 2019, where the gerrymandering case said, Supreme Court said, we're not going to allow, no, the, the district courts, the federal district courts do not police the political parties. They do that themselves in the states for political election. There's other statements made in the 97 case that are uh, very intriguing, some instructive. A lot of instruction, too, how, how they went through. You would have to go through each one of those steps that the Supreme Court says how they treated this matter, and you would have to be able to answer to those. And my mind was coming up with different ways to approach it. I felt that the state uh, Secretary of State who was answering that petition failed to answer in the proper ways. And so that's another, like I was telling you, it wasn't defended correctly at one level. It doesn't mean I'm right. I'm saying that there's another way to approach it. You could expose the federal failure of the Oregon Supreme Court to, inter, to internally uh, account for its own authority and to discount the federal authority. It, in that case, in the 97 case, it wasn't that the Oregon Supreme Court wouldn't uh, wouldn't counter or stand against the Supreme Court because there's another decision they made on two points that they wouldn't, they found that their decision, that the Supreme Court's decision wasn't relevant to their authority relative to how they took it. And so there's a whole lots of analysis to be done here to try and understand how we get to where we are. I look at it as I investigate it for how the people in power, these bar association, utilizes these things to stay in power and to cause confusion. It literally caused a bunch of confusion. They didn't find correctly that the federal Supreme Court didn't, withholds its authority from those types of cases. See, this Oregon Supreme Court had no power to change that either, but what they did have the requirement to do is to find the law correctly, and they fail, which brings doubt on the rest of it. And so uh, maybe a long-winded way to say, you really have to study this. I, for myself, will not re-engage that. I want, I'm only really speak, speaking to those of you that find interest, want to dig in, or want to start to adjust this, maybe go down the path of a... Uh, uh, Gregory Williams' the path, and then expose this point, and then reanalyze whether or not you could go somewhere. I would say for what we do, we're going down uh, Je Jefferson Mining District, and, and our equity suit, and my rights as an equity.
a judgment, a default judgment holder. I don't need to go there, so I'm not going to put more time into it. It doesn't build anything for us, but it could still cause more of those questions. For those that are entering back in that want to make a make a an address, address this problem, there is grounds, I think, for it to do it. I'm not going to press it further. I'm not going to argue that the other terrestrial broadcaster was absolutely wrong. I'm not going to make any more decision to clarify that for anybody. You just got to find out that it's a, your own study. And it, there's very interesting things to learn. There's very interesting things to see. And it's a matter of whether or not you can parse through those and answer to all the now problems. It's actually created a problem in those two cases because there's prior precedent. You have to work through all the failures and show how the things weren't done. They did an inter Oregon uh, uh, Supreme Court did an interesting uh, sh uh, shuck and jive. They claim that all this is over protecting the voter, and then the rest of the case doesn't talk about protecting the voter. They go and they make assumptions instead of fi findings. They make assumptions that political people that are given a lot of money of uh, of uh, contributions, campaign contributions outside the district, that they aren't, they're assumed to not uh, do use the money unlawfully. And I guess that's a presumption of innocence. But the point wasn't about whether or not the money corrupts the campaigner, uh, the con candidate, as the Oregon Supreme Court framed their, their point. The issue would have been relative to voters is whether or not the money's used to unduly influence those voters, which was the whole point of the case. Because that's what the Constitution speaks to, and so you see the con you see the occupier adjusting this. And I guess the important point about this, you have to get dig into these. You have to, you almost have to read. You, your eyes keep rolling back because you really don't want to be there, but you got to be there anyway because you understand. You have to understand how the occupier, how this crime against you is functioning. And until you do. You really, well, you may not understand anything I'm saying, it may be just in principles, but you won't understand the depth of what I'm saying and even begin to come close to how how, it, how it's supposed to be addressed. You will come up with a lot of, well, it ought to be like this. Well, the Constitution says this. Well, yeah, it's how, they say lots of things, but you have people that are manipulating the, the decisions that other people rely on. No different than a scientist who says, I'm going to find a mirror universe, or whether NASA who denies the existence of the sun despite all their satellites, finally says it's going to get colder, and oh, there's a sun. And inside that, there's a knowledge. I told you, inside that, you see the definition. See, the, everybody was, even all the, all the authorities were blinded by the definition. They, they could not look all this time, and they know it. This is not something they don't know. They know that the whole definition was whether the, no nature causes any of this problem. They knew that. And so moving back up to here, we've got two court cases for those of you who wanted to study. This is like an education. This is like a class lesson, even if you weren't interested, to watch how this court case of Venata versus Kiesling gets worked through. And then there's a challenge. And then we see uh, the question presented in the 97 case. And the Supreme Court of Oregon makes the mistake to say that the district courts have the right to decide political uh, election matters. And the Supreme Court in 2019 comes out and says, no, that's not the truth showing infirmity, at least, in the opinions of so-called judges who are supposedly determining the law. And I tell you, my view more is these are opportunities given to an occupier to, uh, to make, to contain the, con the uh, question and maintain the control. Why do I say it like that? Because in Oregon, in you go 1953, and you look at Oregon Statute 174.510 or 515, and then read down to about 0 .560, you see where the Bar Association, when they mention HB2, uh, House Bill 2 of that year, the second bill in that year was made to do this overthrow, where it puts the Bar Association in power. It's the Model Business Corporation acted by a term. They don't say it in there. They say HB2. When you go read the act, you go seeing the elements of what used to be. Let's see, how did this work? This That used to be the elements, I think, of Chapter 57 and also Chapter 60. And one of those, or Chapter 63, was foreign corporation law, which is then imparted as the law of the state. So a foreign corporation moves as the law, substitutes the permit law of the people for a foreign corporation law in the state as the state, and that foreign corporation is the bar, and then it takes control. So it, that was that substitution wasn't even direct. You had to read the other statutes in order to realize 
They didn't say it. You just have to read the contents. There was three or four different statutes built into the transfer. Yes, it's a lot to learn. Yes, it's a big deception. Yes, there's a lot of skullduggery. And yes, someone had to plan it. It's premeditated. But it's what you have to know to read, to understand how they go about taking everybody down. And it's repeatable. Once you learn the, that method, you got it. You just kind of apply it everywhere else. You just got to find the, the, again, the magic decoder ring has to re-decode the authority, the subject matter, and then place in the place the words. But the, the way they push it through is all the same. And it was predictable that the governor was coming. I'm telling you, this is all just, these animals are predictable. It's not a surprise. And yet I find so much surprise in people. It's, um, it's surprising. <laughs> it's surprising how people don't see this. And I don't necessarily, that's a judgment. It's just, it's surprising how simple it is to deceive people. And we continue to, con to allow it. And so, again, I referred to the gerrymandering case to say the Rucho common cause case. What's interesting is common cause, the name common cause, comes up in the Veneta case in 94-97 as amicus or, or inside the, 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 the litigation. These people are long-term. They're fighting in certain ways. They make the wrong arguments all the time. They make a certain arguments all the time, and they, they don't adjust. And the, the, these are kind of like the setup cases I see as we go through. Another instruction in, the, in, in this whole case. How I, interestingly, I'm not interested in all this. They come to me as a challenge. Okay, I've got to go. I've told you, challenge me. Bring the things that would show me I'm wrong. And I look into this one. I had to look into it to verify whether or not I, I needed to tell you today, abandon what Gregory Williams said, even though I didn't get the chance to research it too soon. No, I'm looking at it now. No, not everything's done in that case. In fact, there's a whole bunch of new questions. You have to look at it today from the battlefield that you're in. You want to find out whether or not these people in office are felons, and you want to go through that provision, then you're going to have to do the legwork in order to pull it off. You can't just sit back and complain. That's not my rule. I wish I, I, wish I could go away and go do what I want, but I, I can't. Every time I go away and I go do what I want, someone like these people is coming to aggressively aggress. Notwithstanding the objective basis, somehow they, they've gotten over on that too. It's okay to advance completely lawless things, and and no one will check it. That's the internal, that's the internal check and balance. We sued, folks. Again, this is not news. I don't. This is not coming out just because I'm talking about it. Because this example, we sued for the fa we sued because of the failure of the, uh, the the their election to enforce the inherent power of a branch of government to check a different branch when it was obviously we're breaking the law. Each branch failed its duty there. We ordered to cease and desist based on that. No response. We required we were required to run the remedy, to sue, to stop it, and join it. And they didn't answer to that. That was their mistake. I I'm still blown away if I'll be blown away I think till the day I die. How, why they didn't answer blows me away. They All they had to do was answer, and they would have really put a stick in the spokes because they would have had the plausible advantage, and they didn't. Had to be a gift, a blessing uh, to us. Every duty was upon them to do. Maybe looking back hindsight, they did no duty, so maybe why would they follow through with that? Where's the duty? It's in the attorney general to defend the state. There's a duty that's assigned to this to the, I didn't think anything different. And when they didn't, and then they de each did not, how much bigger a, a gift can we? Can I? Can I uh, say I, we've gotten? Uh, clearly, these these people are criminals without answers. Why nobody else wants to see that or want can see that is astonishing in a in a society of people that believes that they live uh, that they just celebrated the Fourth uh, of July. Actually, I'm kind of tweaked on that a little bit. I keep more years. I, I see this. I get tweaked about that just a little bit. I get triggered. Yeah, there's those of us that will object, but I said, can you object in specific ways about what happened? And then you have to understand that we had the republic to keep. So we come along as a mining district, and then two parties of private uh, private people to sue to stop it, and no one pays attention. Not even the, the criminals, which was pretty self-evident. These self-evident truths, right? It's really, I can't tell you, hard to say it's not providence how this works along when you get on the narrow path. You find the truth of the, of the problem and you, and you bring it, exorcise all the evil out and you keep it nice and true. Like panning for gold, you keep panning and concentrating it until you get down to the shiny stuff. 
or whatever. It could be nutshed. It could be whatever you're after. It can be all kinds of minerals that have value, something of value that you have to work hard, put your work and time into, do it right or you lose it. That's what this thing is about. And they've realized that people generally will not put that kind of work, work out. Even myself, looking back at the old miners, I don't even know how they did what they did. I don't have a clue how they've done what they've done. And they did it with no no help, hardly. And so, uh, this is how we get soft as a nation. So, Supreme Court says that the uh, political decisions made by the local pol- the two parties in your local state uh, would would negate anything that comes from the federal courts. And so this only, and so the 97 case here says that uh, this issue uh, for the uh, for the legitimacy of the felony wasn't decided, given the Rucho case destroys the answer as to whether the federal court could decide to dismiss uh, or to uh, excuse me not dismiss it, but they uh, enjoin uh, enjoin the uh, measure six, which is where the felony penalty is. And so when you look very carefully, you start to see how it's like a chain of title. Where, what authorities do you have? You don't make up. You, you, you might challenge what the Supreme Court did, but you only you don't rely on the challenge because that'll that'll give them power. What you do is you show they're they're not infallible, and you then produce a better answer that's more conducive to the purpose for how the legislation was written. And I'm saying all this and detailing this out this way. Because if, if you're really interested, you're going to find you have to do it this way. And I know it's a lot of work, and a lot of people don't want to do it, but I don't know what else to do. I look around me, and everybody who's not doing this kind of stuff or whining and complaining or just oblivious or deer in the headlights or just taking advantage of or, or all the things that were not free people is all. And you see the ramifications that build up to the point where we got the government at the federal district, the District of Columbia level, waging war on the world, and there's no accountability to it. That's a fractal problem. If we don't have accountability within us, we're not going to have accountability out in the world. And we're going to see all that we're not accountable to. And and maybe even the worst of us will whine about that part once we see that. uh, Because then we know, right? What's the whining about it? And then if you're stopped, like the Title 18, uh, Subsection 4, you're, you're an accessory to it. So, I don't know. Again, objective basis. I'm not trying to put my opinion... I'm finding out what responsibility seems to be, how this place was wired to keep us this way, and that we've given all up and over to the criminals by any facade, by any uh, representation of fraud, by any wild idea that has no proof, any of that, then we're, we can't expect to be treated worse than, I mean, we can't, any better than we're being treated by the worst, I guess I should say. And so, and, and as we see our society standards dropping relative to even objective bases, bases we see the Supreme Court making the, well, we don't do the gerrymandering uh, as a district, as a federal authority. That has to be done by the states and the political party specifically, if you don't understand the power. And that's what i got to get to. The Supreme Court also now says that the trademark office can't reject immoral or scandalous trademarks. So you see, as you see the the wraps being dropped about all these things, and in a way, rightfully so. What is this question even about? Put the put the trademark out there in a way, uh, and, and, but you see that there's no internal accountability in people to be responsible to someone's perception. And I'm not talking about going to the point of of SJW type triggering. I mean, they're just certain things that are generally offensive. And we used to kind of stay away from all that. We just did. It didn't mean that you couldn't, but we didn't make it official. And so now uh, we're going to see that the uh, Supreme Court goes ahead and did the freedom of speech thing. I understand now that the, the court case of Vanetta Kiesling was about the freedom of speech of someone from outside the district to, to actually give contribution money which they didn't find that as an undue influence. but So we see a big involvement here with the, the using the First Amendment uh, to do what they want to get done and then use the lighting in other cases in order to, to obstruct other things. In this case, they can advance removing the self-check that we had to try and keep things, uh, even subjectively so, on things that were, what they say, immoral. 
You see, there is no immorality, and why would there be in something that's amoral? And so, again, here's the truth of the type of establishment that was made, and you can almost see this thing coming to fruition as the, as the elements of it are put into place over, over time. Now, I don't want to, again, part of me says it's fine, First Amendment, do what you want, but this is in commerce now, remember. And this is the way they try to miss this thing, too. So, this decision... Uh, is interesting. People will apply it to the copyright, or excuse me, is it copyright? I can't remember. Maybe copyright. It won't apply in the other field. It only applies to these trademarks. Because this is an aid government agency that sub, sub, you see the limit of their authority relative to the First Amendment. And whoever argued this uh, got it pushed through that you can go ahead and have vulgar things and that's going to be potentially something you're going to see on a mug somewhere. Well, you could have seen it anywhere else uh, because it could have been an idea, a, a true expansion, expression, but this is relative to a commerce uh, commerce expression. And so, I don't, again, I don't want you to be, don't look too far past. The Supreme Court seems to always be talking in commerce connection. There's really not an organic discussion here. And I guess that's part of where I get hesitant to say I'd really agree with it or not. And at one level, yeah, we have the right to say something, but... It, do we really want to, pro do we want as a society, I guess, is the question. Should we have some self-censorship on, on vulgarity? A lot of people don't. I mean, I get that. But w w this works in the other way as well. So we're losing, I guess, the... When non-reality becomes uh, commonplace, and any, any reality is, is every place. And you almost see that in the, uh, the, the, the social justice warrior type problem. There's no basis for it. It's all feelings and this and that, which is free expression, that's for sure. But if you put that in practice and principle, you could not put those principles on the land law of the United States. And that's why I get, I can tell you to come here and fight, fight directly against it, because it's completely contrary to objective basis. If you expect a property in you and the, where you stand, you're going to need to draw a line. That's that cell wall. You're going to need to draw a, lo a red line somewhere so that not all relativity is everywhere because you destroy the integrity of the entire of the entirety that way. Anyway, I didn't want to get really this far. You can go ahead and uh, be vulgar and immoral and everything on your logos now. The Supreme Court says that the uh, trademark office has to allow it. Ninth Circuit rejects facial recognition claims against Facebook. Here's, now we move on. Uh, to these people that are doing climate change and these uh, making war on you and the governor that now proves out exactly what I told you she was going to do, come out with a vengeance and use the children as a human shield. Those of the technocratic side that are keeping track uh, uh, were just now sued and the uh, Ninth Cir Circus uh, Court of Appeals uh, rejected the fact of the uh, use of the Facebook where the people using the tool, uh, the platform, put their information in a specific spot uh, that was general instead of a private spot, which I don't know how much that's going to matter, but notwithstanding any of that, uh, this is the rule that says that these these technocratic organizations, these, these data-collecting organizations that you buy into, that you put your information in, uh, the silent weapons for quiet wars that it ends up being, uh, did the people who tried to stop that for them were unsuccessful. It doesn't mean that if you find interest in this, and I don't know why you would put this much time into all that, just stop using the product, stop using the platform, but if you wanted to do something like this and you were concerned and still wanted to use it because you needed that social contact, well, maybe you don't care about privacy, but at any rate, if you did, you got there is a little bit of, there's a little bit in you that's modest, uh, then you need to take a look at something like this and le learn what they did wrong and then look at your condition and see is there something that's not litigated or wasn't one of the exceptions that could be included. Again, doing the analysis of how the, the courts would go with this. Uh, not that you're going to change their mind or anything like that. Just make yourself look like you fit into the ex current exception for the time being. And going on, uh, so uh, those of you that want to participate with all the big data collectors, I don't know what to talk to you about. I I try to avoid them as much as possible. Uh, here's a complete list on the uh, now posted uh, of alternatives uh, to Google products. And I suppose there's going to be more lists now that you can get and avoid Google. I have used 
for uh, years now uh, on the browsers a plugin called NoScript, and it's tedious somehow, but I get to program over time what I want to see, what hooks up with the browsers and what doesn't. And every chance I, I get where I don't need a service from Google or Facebook or Faceplant or Instagram or Pinterest or any of those, if it asks for something from one of those uh, those sites, it blocks it. And I put up with whatever happens. I don't, I do not, uh, my browsers are so locked down, it's almost, I wonder sometimes why I use them. But I mean, they're useful. And so, but I try not to, I try not to participate with any of these companies. That's how I do it. But here's some alternatives to Google products. They list a whole bunch. I'll give you a link to all that. I, like I said, duck, duck, go, start page. Even old dog pile. I don't know. They all seem to go work with Google, but it goes through like uh, duck, duck, go is in part using Google. And it goes through a proxy, so there's a little bit of a of a of a buffer. First of all, secondly, uh, th there's others other other companies that offer searches that don't just you just use uh, any Google products or any other ones. You just again, the, for me, the no script kind of it tells you what it's blocking out. It's going lightning fast, and you can pick out things with your eyes. It's blocking all stuff. I don't load all kinds of stuff on my computer in my browsers. It just doesn't load. And I find that when when it hangs, it's hanging all over a Google product usually, and I don't need it, so it has to hang until it gives it up and then and passes it on. And so there's a, these things I put up with in order not to deal with these. Do not give any support, folks. Stop using the product. Work. I even copy links going to places and put them through a browser that blocks the link and the before it moves on, so I can look to see do I want to go to the to the secondary link. I don't give anybody any credit. I take all the twi the twi yeah, it takes time. I take the Twitter a extensions off, the where it came from, Facebook. I don't I don't give any ability as I can find it. it takes a little bit of time to not give the data that they need to keep track of what's going on as much as possible. Anyway, so this is what they're doing. They're taking all this this technocracy that's imposing sustainable things is utilizing all these platforms that we talk big data to keep track of what's going on because that's eventually coming into a system of um, identification and then control of your behavior, whether that's by force, external to you, or by from inside. And part of that is once they you dropped your internal accountability, your internal principles, uh, they have you anyway, and this is the other thing. We're not exercising the account, our own accountability, responsibility muscle, in, in some regard, and so we're we're just we're just kind of uh, sand in the in the surf in a way. Uh, police use Lexus Nexus facial recognition to identify your family and friends. So as I, we talked about the DNA, they use your your face, and they do these data. They think they they start creating dossiers on everybody. You don't even have to be involved, especially with the DNA. But silent weapons for quiet wars predicted in the future. They make a place for you in society. If a technocrat will need a thing, and they'll make a free gift or some kind of thing, even low cost, and they'll get you involved, and they'll get what they want, and you're going to give it to them. So police use Lexus Nexus. That's a publicly offered uh, offering that it breaks through all what you thought before was regarded for protection from things that would incriminate you. So your Fifth Amendment goes down the tubes. More and more, and you aren't even part of that. As I told you before, you won't even have to. You won't have to do anything wrong, and someone can point the finger and tell it and say and, and false witness on you. They just false witness. Who cares? You're not going to go after an official. They're not. They're going to cover that up. And for those of you that ever deal with TSA, you know that part. You might get a name or a name that they put on a label, but it doesn't mean you're going to get that officer an accountability. You no longer own your face, folks. I mean, this is what <laughs> stories are coming out to tell us what's up. If 20 people are in a coffee shop, then there are at least 21 cameras, one embedded in each one's phone, and usually one tucked high in the count in the corner. What you say may be overheard and tweeted. What you might even appear in the background of another patron selfie or Skype session, but that doesn't stop even the most private people from entering coffee shops. They accept the risk inherent in entering a public place. And that's not public either, is it's a private thing. So the so the business owners are involved, again commerce, but your public places are now the surveillance centers. I don't know how many times I've told you this in the past. It's now 
here that your image, your face, they're claiming is not yours. My thought was maybe it's time to start copywriting your face. Now, there, I don't know what forms you'd have to do to copyright all the different forms it could be, find all the different standards, and then made a patent up or a copyright for the information on your face. There's a thought that I had. If this is the case, that you no longer on your face, or at least someone says so, and probably, maybe it is, because when they take the data from your face, they now use it, and they possess and control that data, do they? Well, if you don't own your face, they can do that. If you do own your face, if I relate this to mining law, exclusive possession and, and use is what I am granted. That's what a copyright does. And if I apply the same standards, then they can't use it. If you ever find out they're using it as copyrighted, then they are viable in li via violation to your copyright. I'm not saying do it, folks. You need to research this. I'm just saying that's the first thought that came to my mind. Maybe it's time we start copywriting our face. There has been things in the past where you copyright your signatures and all this other stuff. But when you do that, that's not the only thing you have to do. So I ask you, really dig deep onto what it means, what you're doing. And if you follow that, you have to do everything correctly and consistently. Otherwise, the failure to do certain things that are required once you go down that path will negate what you've done. It's not that complicated. It's just that you have certain things to do. It's almost it's the standard. It's the objective basis. If you want to rescind a signature even, not that you copyright it, you want to rescind it. You have to meet certain standards so that it's acknowledged to be what you wanted it to do and upon the thing you wanted it done and a, to the people or against the people who may be using it. There's a certain notice that you give. And so, and anyway, I'm trying to tell you there's the news, here's the notice to us. Take an action, think about it. It may sound stupid, but I told you you're going to have to do things in the future coming because there is no scruples against immoral activity now. And there's no. Uh, there's no. We now realize that these so-called the, the the people in robes aren't the law. They make mistakes. Scalia, but that was a bigger big statement. Well, you came to us for the answer. Why are you dis, why are you upset with our opinion? Perfect, perfect. I laughed just because it was the truth. Exactly. Thank you. Now what do we do with that, folks? It's okay. Now we know it. Bigger. We can know all kinds of information. What do we do with it? Well, we better start thinking about what we do with it. I've been here every ten or so years. And broadcast, and I think I saw Grimner put up a six years at, at the um, at the Real Liberty Media. I don't remember now. Uh, at any rate, it doesn't matter. We've been here years and years uh, trying uh, trying to get the word out. On here's the notice. Now you have an opportunity to uh, to do something. You no longer own your face. Okay, well, if that's the case, I got to find out if that's the case too. But given that's the case, and it looks like it in this scenario then maybe it's time that you need to consider your protections of what that might be. Will it work? I don't know. You know, the system is going to decide its way, but if you stand in laws that are outside of their jurisdiction, you know how you argue against them acquiring a right to say, then you're starting to listen a lot closer to what I've been telling you, how you avoid the problem, not engage it. So, with all this, you don't own your face, then it comes, and I told you this again, and the theme has been, you're going to have to make laws to stop this stuff that looks stupid and nonsense, but it's causing you harm because there's not going to be a way to stop it at all, because that's the way this place is actually wired. Should police facially, uh, facial recognition be banned was a question that was put forward. I, I think that is what I'm saying, folks. The thought occurs to you, or should... Maybe we should ban this stuff. Now, the government will only ban it for its purposes or its licensees' purposes. That might be a lot and enough. See, this is the other problem with the with the big data. If they're found to be private and separate and not controllable through the public way, like the easement, the usufruct of the public transmission system, they might be able to still skirt this. But San Francisco is set to become the first city of the U.S. to ban police officers. Well, since I've pointed this out or put this up, it has enforced that there would be a ban on police officers and other governmental officials from using facial recognition technology. Remember now, specific to the police officers and other government officials, not outside that. And this is where you see the limit of the jurisdiction. Things inside that jurisdiction, I don't mean on the ground, I mean in their authority and establishment, are controllable. This is where we get to the property law. The disposal was exclusive to the patentee, could not be things inside the government. 
And as I pointed out to you, that's of a, a primary economy disposition, a disposition of land, and the government sits in a tertiary capacity, twice removed in authority. The concerns about pa facial recognition is well, well founded. Absent strong re restrictions, police use the use of facial recognition poses a significant threat to our privacy and could could hamper First Amendment protected in protests and other legal activities. Okay, fine, we can go through all that. The point is they're making and considering and have passed laws to stop this stuff. This is exactly what I've been telling you. It to sound stupid, but you're going to have to go into your governments and in the policies in particular, because that's really what they call their first line. And you have to adjust these policies so that they stop coming out to harm you or use things to harm you. And they've done it now, down to the, every jurisdiction, it seems, is going to have to do it. Now what follows after that, after the question, and I didn't do this in time because I just don't get to all this information. Upon the question, should we ban facial recognition, a first city pops up, and now a second city in the nation, Somerville City Council passes facial recognition ban from the Tenth Amendment center block. So now we're seeing, this is just a title now, the authority from which how, or how they can ban it's coming through, and this is the t through the Tenth Amendment to local control. But the cities are doing it, not the counties. And the counties should actually be uh, jumping into this a little bit tighter. I just want to point out to you again what I've been telling you. It's coming the time, a stupid time in the future, when you're going to have to make laws against uh, against things you thought were normal to do, like the uh, Florida passing the law that you have the right to grow food in your front yard. I thought before I could have, well, I probably would have if I was uh, addressed with it. I've grown food in my front yard for years and never been had a problem, uh, but that was before here recently. I would have uh, probably challenged that the interference with the growing that food was uh, sabotage underneath federal law. Did you know that, folks? I mean, messing with your food is a pretty important thing in the law. And while you see everything is underneath the war, uh, war perception, messing with the population's food is an important violation. And so, and notwithstanding my opinions, the second nation now makes a law uh, for to ban facial recognition. Another law, another article, the second U.S. city to ban facial recognition comes out. Everybody, it's a lot. The, the the cities now are coming to ban this so quickly that they, everyone thinks that they're the second. But uh, notwithstanding, the point is that, that you are going to have to integrate. You think it's kind of gotten dumb and stupid? No, it's gotten worse. It's going to get worse than that. And all of you that have an intelligence about how the law is supposed to work, I'm telling you, jump ahead. Don't argue with what's up. Don't argue with what ought to be. Just jump up and in and understand the subject matter well enough that you be the proper answer on making the policies that stop the government from violating the law. It would be very cool to start seeing people bring up a, a statutory policies that forbid the, especially now that NASA has said we're going colder, and recognizing the sun, most importantly, because climate change, global anthropomorphic global warming didn't recognize the sun, then we can now make laws that say you can't impose sustainable development. You can't impose climate climate change because it's a punitive harm, straight up. Oregon did nothing else. It exposed to us, and because all the adherents admitted bringing on anything to do with climate change or behavioral controls and or taxation is punitive in nature without d due process. Completely reviled uh, uh, by the Tim's case, as I talked to you about weeks ago. Uh, a major police... Now, so that we have the pressure, as I tell you how this works out, you make your policies, you get your cities and your counties to start pushing back on all these things that are intrusive through surveillance. Then we find the go the industry starts coming back and says a major police body camera maker hits pause on face surveillance. Communities and lawmakers across the country are waking up to the fact that using facial recognition for government surveillance is a troubling trend. No, no, it's got to be more than a troubling trend. It's got to be a violation. And, and that's how you have to state it, like the other article said, particularly when used with cameras that police officers wear. So Axon, the company that sells all these police uh, military devices, uh, is putting a hold uh, on their face recognition surveillance information. It's a commercializing face matching products on our body cameras at this time is no longer going to happen. Commercializing face matching products. So understand the limit of the jurisdiction they're looking at to stop, but it's also, remember the title, says on pause. 
You have to make this stuff permanent, folks. If you set back the technocrats like someone like Brown, Kate Brown shirt over in Oregon are going to come aggressively to make sure they get the tools they need to keep you in behavioral, behavioral modification mode. They're going to do it how, however they can, and technology is going to be the number one tool, like Silent Weapons for Quiet War speaks to. And as I was mentioned here, again, it's a major policy. Now you're affecting the industry that's making these tools. They're not going to eventually. They're not going to be able to. They're not going to put a lot of time and energy where they're not going to make a dollar, or it can't be added as an additional value. And so you now curb the corporate. For those of you that are anti-corporate, here, that's how you do it. If you think what I'm saying doesn't work, this when you make it known that this is a, something that the people don't want, and there's and your counties and your cities are actually actively banning a lot of this intrusive uh, technology, it will start to wither up and dry up and blow away. Uh, and here's again, like I said, I mentioned it before, the Florida couple front yard garden legal uh, is legal after six year battle. I, I, I'm like, what? No. That was that case I read behind the woodshed, a Miami couple whose front yard vegetable garden prompted six le six year legal battle with their village has held, a, it takes a village idiot, I guess, to raise a child, folks, but uh, with uh, their village and has held a ceremonial replanting of veggies under a new federal Florida law legalizing such gardens statewide. You'd have thought you'd had the right. Well, this was in a village. Remember those housing associations. That's a little different animal. And I said, if you're in that kind of condition, maybe you shouldn't go in there in the first place or get out and give it to someone else who wants to live under that servitude. You can't even necessarily, and I didn't look too deep, but you probably can't apply the kind of law I'm talking about at land disposal. Uh, so, but it took a fed of Florida state legislation to allow you to allow you folks to grow food in your yard. A apparently, the federal standard of uh, sabotage wasn't enough. Now, no one brought it up. I'm just saying, okay, this is where you go. It took six years, and, and then they had to petition the Florida government uh, in order to do this. Something that you thought you could do anywhere, something that doesn't harm a soul now has to be put in law for you to do is exactly what I've been telling you. Because if you don't have the law, you don't have a remedy, and someone who doesn't have a law to stop them will come after you because you don't under, actually understand that we need cell walls, we need border walls, we need jurisdictional constraints, and we need to have an objective basis to, for, to go. The, again, uh, the no state solution is not a solution. It looks attractive if you look at the the utopian side, the mythical side of it, the made up side of it, but it's not actual. In fact, as I told you, the definition of a non state condition is communism. See, it's all, there's one thing, there's nothing separate. And so this is how this is starting to work, where you're going to, you don't have a restriction. A, a, the law wall against it, but allowing you to, you're not going to be able to, and those people will use the failure of that to attack you. The failure of that restriction. It's I don't I mind-boggling to me. It's what it's one of the things I'm irritated by daily when I work through why do things people take so long to read the objective basis and takes years to get anything done uh, relative to an existing existing objective basis that we could all follow and bring uh, not, bring things such as the out-of-control Western fires and out-of-control smoke under control. Why don't people just read the black and white that exists to stop this nonsense that it takes years before they start coming to the term, the time of it, the idea of it? It is astonishing to me. Frustrating as heck, too. This could be done years ago. But now it's come to a time not just that an objective basis it has to be taught to people and how it works to maintain peace and, and, and stability. No, we're going to talk, and now we're having an attack on things that are not written that have to be written. And then you're up against, it just occurred to me, like Gary L's condition where he goes to a county, he said, or I think it was the county, he says, here, why don't we, we need to make an ordinance that stops the cross-pollination of, of GMO crops and the, and, the, and the commissioner or whoever it was, the seated decision says, but we don't have that problem now. There's no foresight either, folks. And so we, we've got a real dynamic problem going on, and, and none of us out there is not going to change it. Some of us out there is going to change a little bit here and there, and hopefully you can make inroads to more 
comprehensive and more na national type things. I say that because we are fortunate enough to work through a colleague connection stream and a seated decision that was able to take a local uh, condition of, against the smoke and to control the fires, take that and go national with it. So now all counties at least have the idea they can work with it. So that it can happen, folks. It's just a matter you got to just keep working. But when you don't have an objection, you don't have the ability to stop the crime against you, as they found out here could happen. The British government forced to delete millions of illegal citizen biometric voice prints. I looked at why just an illegal citizen. The point is, there's a mechanism for being able to take a government down and get rid of the stuff that they're using against you. And if you don't have that mechanism in place, for as stupid as it sounds like it has to be there right now, you will not be able to have this ability to take it down. They were doing DNA, fingerprint, face, and voice data things here. The government was ordered to take it all down. The National Biometric Database, if you don't think Real ID is, not work, Real ID is working through that. Again, you're going to have to protect yourself. A lot of people don't care to do this. They think they can get away with it. They'll put up with it. I don't agree with that attitude at all. You allow the you become the accessory to your crime and you justify it. It's going to take some strong, principled, willed people to stop the problem. And a lot of that's going to be started. We have a, a couple of different fronts to fight. One of them is to have a bunch of people who actually know law good enough to do the right suggestion. Because then I say that because... A lot of people, like, relative to the Second Amendment, they want to have their counties, oh, you're going to recognize the Second Amendment, this and that. When you look at this, you look at what they want to say, and you look at the laws that exist, they're saying all the wrong stuff. And there's a better way to approach what the problem is. You need to be those people that do that better look. And it takes a bit of work to be able to cut through this and still... And then there's that dynamic between the government, uh, if they don't act, they look like they're not doing working for the people, and you're looking at the thing, well, if they act, they kind of mess themselves up. But the people are ignorant, they don't know that. So how, how, do, you, how do you bring those two, how do you bring into those two together where you get the government to do something so it looks like they're working that does something additional that they can do and appease the one who doesn't feel that their rights are being listened to, who doesn't really understand? can be quite a work. I just point out those of you that are getting your hands and roll, rolling up your sleeves, you're going to run into that too. And you have to work out this for people that don't quite get it. Those people that want to impose what ought to be instead of the existing thing that already sits there to do things, you just have to do uh, maybe uh, bring attention to certain aspects of it. So, it, it, okay, so you don't have a law, uh, then these people will hold all this stuff. Again, this illegal citizen thing, what the heck? I mean, I don't even, I can't even go, I can't even get there, folks. It's just, just this thing, this label they tack onto people to justify crime. And so one of the avoidances is you don't buy in, you don't agree. You see, like we're saying, I throw off Google and products. Now, do I, do I, does Google touch my life? Absolutely. They're pervasive. I couldn't use YouTube without a bit of it. But everything I can get away with is blocked out. Well, you block them out. You stop buying their product. You start, stop buying what they have to sell. Surveillance, and, and this came out of, out of Can Canukistan. I was blown away. The heart of the problem for the global governance br uh, system being brought in and agreed to. Uh, but here we have it. That, that even in the heart of the, the control, uh, you can throw off this stuff. Surveillance capitalism. Again, big data is a problem. It's big business. Surveillance capitalism, in quotes, Toronto urged to abandon Google's smart city project. They were urged. Someone had to stand up and give the re right, right reasons why uh, gray side, Google's quayside project should be, should not go through in Toronto. In fact, it's pressed two officials involved with it to resign. In fact, since then and since this dad tab, they did not agree to a smart city in Canada. I'm shocked, folks. No joke here. I am shocked. The most controlled, advanced position for global governance in smart, technocratic future was a now abandoned at this point by Toronto. This is what you have to do. These people, these companies are right there to make your next step and the future they want. They're, they know it's money. It's, it's money to profit to them. They don't care about you at all. But it takes an, a 
someone to go in and explain the problem and and work that out with people so that they all see the problem at the same way that you see it and hopefully objectively it's not you know going there with the big frothy uh, screaming and yelling you have really have to work this out with people again why because when you give it over to the government they collect information they don't care about limiting they're not self accountable they don't care with a single wiretap see smart cities is the surveillance of it's a wiretapping that you actually agree to maybe not to the extent that you understood to agree to remember that they were ordering that the uh, apartment complexes in one city was going to be able to put and wire your place for sound because they were going to help the tenants. Yeah, they want to bring it in a package, but when they get this information, they don't. there's no stopping the big suction sound that starts when they suck it all up. And with a single wiretap, police collected 9.2 million text messages to investigate in Texas. So you have to be careful of what you know, you might think you're protected, but there's no there's no um, protection in these cases. You see, the, the the judiciary will make decisions they don't have authority over. In fact, this decision came out of a federal district court in Texas. I know those don't have jurisdiction. There is no federal territory in Texas over which that territorial or legislative court has jurisdiction. And yet, no one no one looks at this. And yet, they were able to get a wiretap to suck up information from 190, uh, 149 individuals. And I find that amazing. 149 people made 9.2 million text messages. And so, we have the evidence of what's to be done. Why you, that you can do things. What happens when you don't do things? And that's uh, up to us now, folks. I guess is the responsibility is on us. And again, adding on uh, maybe a little bit more to keep Google and, and, these, and these surveillance people where you can, uh, there's a new instruction, if those of you that are interested, how to enable DNA, DNS over HTTP, HTTPS uh, on Firefox. Is a, I'll give you a link from ZDNet. You've probably seen it, uh, maybe you've seen it before just last night. I wanted to tell you, you can actually put a DNS hookup through a secured connection, and anybody looking in, maybe like the police here, cannot see what that's done because it's all encrypted in how it hooks up your browser to where it wants to go. It bypasses your local ISP. It's another way to keep these prying eyes where they suck up all this information, just just keep gathering, and they use it as a and cap, and they're to make money also as well as behavioral control in law enforcement. They, they use this stuff because they can readily read your stuff. Encrypting it is a way to do that. Here's an instruction on how to put where you want to go encrypted so they can't even see where you're at, let alone what you're doing through there. Right? So this is all on us, and no one's going to do this for us. And I wanted to get to the next tab, but I'm not going to be able to. Talking about, I think maybe I'll do this next week as a, as a something as an object lesson. We know we're going to walk into a big problem, into a wall, a tiger, into a cage of tigers, and we walk in completely unprepared, even though we know. It's the tale of, of, our, of our frailty as well. Uh, people who are intelligent and know, showing you how hard this might be, how, how much energy it takes in this type of a world they're developing for us when we really are too, we shouldn't be as quiet as we are. We should be preparing way in advance. Uh, I have to wait till next time. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm running out of time. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and uh, all the things that go on for us to make this broadcast possible and post the blogcaster and uh, Jules over at ucwhite.tv. Thank you very much for the simulcast. And uh, over if, if you were at uh, maybe uh, Sound Minds over at YouTube, I think there may or may not be a, a broadcast, a simulcast there. Anywhere else that reposts, thank you very much. Folks, this is just for you to understand things are happening without you. And if you don't now make blocks and, and protections uh, written, you're going to be susceptible and vulnerable to anybody who wants to aggressively come after you. And there's really no stop for it. So I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. That's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 